So before somebody says it, yes, I am well aware that Sinner Get Ready is not a metal album. Uh, it's not even really adjacent to metal or even adjacent to something like hard rock or punk rock. But it is objectively heavier than like 99.9% .9 of the fucking generic ass metalcore and brutal death metal that quite frankly y'all consistently spam my fucking DMs with. So you know what? Fuck it. I don't really give a shit. <laughs> Sinner Get Ready is the third studio album from Experimental Noise and Extreme Music and Classical Fusion Project Lingua Ignota, the brainchild of one Kristen Hayter. For a few years now, she has been responsible for some of the most abrasive, mentally taxing, and emotionally challenging music I've ever heard. Her 2019 record Caligula, in particular, uh, left me practically crippled and devastated, and as such was not only my favorite metal album of 2019, but my favorite album of the year altogether and one of my favorite records of the 2010s. The way she blended influences from extreme experimental and even classical music on Caligula is nothing short of earth-shattering. I mean, oppressive guitars and percussion and keyboards all over the place, insane operatic vocals, lyrics uh, detailing her experiences with sexual assault and rape and harassment with the Catholic Church. It was all incredibly gripping. It left a literal gaping, bleeding hole in my heart. It is not an exaggeration to say that I was mentally, physically, mentally fucked up by Caligula. And honestly, it, it still manages to force a tear or two out of me when I play it today. It may not have been strictly metal in sound, not entirely at least, but it was certainly pretty fucking brutal and metal in spirit. Hence why we reviewed it on the channel, hence why I named it my favorite metal album of the year. As a result of all of this, I have been extremely excited for Sinner Get Ready. It is my most anticipated album of the year in any genre. I will admit I was a little worried that Caligula could be a lightning in a bottle kind of moment and therefore could not be recaptured despite Kristen Hayter's best efforts, but extremely excited nonetheless, and eventually very pleased to hear that she may actually share the same concerns as I do, because this is not Caligula Part 2. This is not uh, an expansion on anything she did on that record. It's very different, not just emotionally, psychologically, conceptually, but musically as well. The production is a little bit more skeletal. There's more focus on simplistic keyboards and string arrangements and uh, steel guitars. Uh, there's less heavy percussion. There are less blackened and industrial elements. The vocals, while still pretty wild and manic, can often also be a lot softer a lot more gentle. The track Pennsylvania Furnace in particular is a stunningly serene and relaxed number, to the point of being genuinely quite hypnotic. It's hard not to find yourself enveloped and immersed in the incredibly warm piano parts and in Kristen's incredible vocals. This track alone, sonically, is like the polar opposite of everything that Caligula was about. If that album was Superman, this is bizarro. And the tracks that are heavier, or perhaps more appropriately in the case of this album, more chaotic, are often so not because of a guitar riff or a drum beat or a big wall of industrial buffoonery, but rather because of Kristen's incredible vocal manipulation, because of the incredible production, because of all of these different instruments that are constantly swirling in and out of the forefront of the sound, from chimes to acoustic and steel guitars to uh, different choir parts. Not to mention the incredibly dark and disturbing lyrics, which stray from the personal matters of Caligula and appear to place American Christianity and organized religion under a microscope. Examining, dissecting, and exploring how some people often dedicate their entire lives, their entire existence on this earth, 
to an ideology to their devotion for God or to Jesus Christ. One could even go as far as to view this as an American Christian gospel album, but arranged, performed, and produced by a group of psychopathic religious zealots. Particularly with tracks like Repent Now, Confess Now, Order of the Spiritual Virgins, and the absolutely jaw-dropping spectacle of I Who Bend the Tall Grasses. The latter of which has easily the most demented and, and volatile and aggressive vocals that Lingua has ever displayed. And I am including everything from Caligula in this instance. Like, she really is ranting and raving like some deranged far-right goon who thinks that he might be the messiah in human form. She's going fucking ape shit, and coupled with a lot of chime work and some very haunting organ pieces and the incredible vocal layering and the vocal textures and the choir work, it, it makes for an incredibly uh, hypnotic and horrifying affair. As much as I love Caligula, I'll be the first to admit that Intentionally at times, mind you, but nonetheless, it is an extremely overwhelming listen. I mean, it is 60 minutes of pure, unrelenting emotional trauma in sonic form. It's a lot of information and a lot of powerful emotions to digest and swallow, and not everyone is capable of doing that. It's clear to me right off the bat that this is something Kristen very much thought of during the production of this record because you have the piano ballads to provide that contrast. We've toned down on the metal and the extreme influences. And I, we, I should also note there are also a lot of atmospheric passages that hearken to more psychedelic ambitions. They're very intimate, they're very warm, they're very trippy. It all makes for a much more varied and even accessible kind of experience. I will concede that I do miss some of the heavier influences found on Caligula, but that being said, I don't think anyone is coming to a Lingua Ignota record looking for a bunch of riffs and blast beats, so I don't picture this being a gigantic obstacle. And even despite that, I still genuinely loved this album. The closest thing I could offer to a genuine criticism would be uh, maybe in regards to the song length. I think some of the songs on here are a little bulky, a little fatty. The Order of Spiritual Virgins in particular could probably do with having at least two and a half minutes trimmed right off. I'm going to give this thing a 4.5 out of 5. I think this is an incredible record. It may not have left the gaping wounds in my heart and soul that Caligula did, but that's not really a bad thing. While that album will always hold a very special place in the crater that was once my heart, ironically created by that album, Sinner Get Ready is pretty remarkable too. If that album was Master of Puppets, then this is her and Justice for All. Kristen knew for a multitude of reasons that she simply could not replicate the success and effect of Caligula, so she didn't. Instead, she poured her heart out in new and exciting ways, and it's made for some of her most fascinating material yet. For me, this is probably my favorite non-metal album of the year so far, right up there with Cavalcade from Black Midi and uh, Battle at Gardens Gate from Greta Van Fleet, and quite possibly one of my favorite albums of the year altogether. A spellbinding, uh, a beautifully ruinous affair. It's incredible. I love it. Um, yeah, I'm running out of stuff to say, so let's just wrap this up officially. 4.5 out of 5, what a fucking incredible record. Holy shit, I don't care if it's not metal, please go check it out. And that is it for the Metal Meltdown. I'm not an expert, nor do I claim to be. So what do you think? Do you like this record? Do you not like this record? And what do you want to hear from me next? And thank you for watching. Make sure you press subscribe right here so you can get updates on the Metal Meltdown e fuck immediately in case you somehow aren't already. And as always, you have yourself a fantastic fucking day.